Okay, hello everybody. Sorry for late. we're being late tonight. It's um, supposed to start at 7.30 and we're here at eight o'clock and that's not because of any problems with the people. I haven't been able to connect to my Zoom room. All of a sudden the camera doesn't work. And uh, we were able to, with the pace, thanks God for the help with, the, with the Kent and the Jen, we're able to at least get my voice in to talk tonight. So I'm, first of all, I want to apologize for uh, anybody that came in and you had to wait like this. But anyway, but anyway, it has, it has a lot to do with what I want to share tonight. But first of all, I want to continue. Well, let's begin with a prayer. I need to get prayer because I really get ticked off. Um, you know, like, and in some ways, not, not St. Peter, but, you know, I really get ticked off. <laughs> I want everything to happen yesterday. So bear with me and my patience. But anyway, Lord Jesus, I ask your blessings upon this meeting. Uh, to First of all, to Kent and Jenny and, and all the people that showed up. I don't know who's here. Uh, they, they, maybe they can't see me, but I can't see them. Oh, I'm looking at a black box with a circle spinning. I don't know whether I'm supposed to update Zoom. I don't know what, I don't know what the problem is. But anyway, Lord, bless us. And, um, and bless, bless, first of all, bless us, the sharing tonight, and also those who are watching. And Lord, we just want to do your will, uh, you know, in, in all we see happening around the world. We want to be part of the problem and not part of the, part of the solution rather than part of the problem. <clears throat> and we're ready to serve you in any way that you may call us to do as a, as a, for me as a Catholic priest, John Grayson is an Anglican priest and all my brothers and sisters and lay people that are involved in this. So Lord, show us the way and guide us. Okay, last week uh, we, we, got, we started to center in on healing uh, well, the last few weeks and we've had some pretty dramatic uh, things happen, you know, with people in prayer. And the one thing that happened that really struck me was last week after we prayed over Jennifer and her son Kyle, uh, and then, of course, we talked for a while, and I had to get off, and you, I know you people were rapping for a while quite after the show, talking back to each other. And then I got an email the following morning. I woke up early. I got an email from Jennifer, Jennifer and she told me what happened after the, uh, we actually prayed over her and Kyle, and then also uh, John Grayson and his son Christopher, as, because we want to we do this every week. People call in and say, would you pray for this or pray for they don't call in if they send something to our email address on the ring of fire group and and or the panel here asking questions as we're doing the show we, we we want to respond to that and we look for witnesses if things happen god starts to do things to witness to it so anyway jane just take a few minutes and why don't you share what happened after we prayed over uh, you and and uh, and kyle well um after we stopped visiting, and I went over to take care of Kyle, and I noticed that he was just bright red with fever. He's got, you know, this really pale skin, so when he, even a, a low temp gives him bright rosy cheeks, and I touched him, and he was boiling, literally, um, and not just his face, but his, his arms, his whole body, his feet were boiling. So, and he kept telling me, he's fine. He knows the fever means, you know, probably the doctor, emergency room visit. But um, so I got a cool washcloth and I put it on his forehead just to try to see if I could bring him down. And I, I lifted it because it wasn't quite right. So when I picked it up, the washcloth was boiling just as much as he was. And it was literally, I laid it down and picked it up so I could reposition it. And wow, it was as hot as he was. And so of course, my husband and I are saying, oh my goodness. Uh, COVID-19, we take him to the ER, they're going to make me go home, and Kyle will be in the hospital by himself, but uh, he can't speak, and, you know, I, I just saw the whole thing happening in my head, so 
And Kyle kept looking at me and he was just so worried. His eye, he was staring into my eyes and he kept saying like, it, it was kind of like a, a moan, like he was breathing and moaning at me and looking at me. I said, so, well, Kyle, what, are you in pain? Uh, what can I do? And he, he's, no. And he'd repeat it. Do you need something? Any, you kept asking him yes or no ans answers. And then he finally stretched out the moan to where I recognized it at his version of I love you, mom. And I said, oh, but then he was he had the worried look. I said, babe, I love you. I love you forever. And then I said, do you want to pray? And he's nodded vehemently like, yes, finally she understands me. So I said, well, what do you want to pray? I said, do you want to pray to Mama Mary? Yes. So for three hours straight, putting I gave him some Tylenol in his feeding tube and kept putting cool compresses on him. And for three hours straight, he I held his hand, but he put his whole arms, holding my arms down onto his chest for, so that I wouldn't move. And I uh, just kept praying for three hours straight, Hail Mary in English, French, Latin. <laughs> and uh, just kept on going. And um, suddenly, like at the end of three hours, I touched him and he was cool. Really, really cool to the touch. Dry, cool. Um, look, I'm turning red talking about it. Uh, <laughs> And uh, he just, I said, well, you, you look like you feel better. And he said, yes. I said, well, you know, did, did Mama Mary come say hi? He said, yes. And then he just said it again. He told me he loved me. And uh, he said it a bunch of times. And I was able to clean him up and by the, so he told me, he tell, tells me to go to bed. His, his, he uh, switches his eyes together, like, go to bed, mom. <laughs> so, but I, I'm here in the same room with him. So, um, in the morning, he, <laughs> he had a massive cleansing, if you get my drift, as father would. <laughs> Um, and he has been healthy, no more fever, uh, able to eat again, eating well, and uh, wow, no more, it just, there's no other way I can describe it, because the temperature was too hot for the water, you know, error, it was, he was on fire, he was boiling so and then he cleaned out and he's well he's not coughing anymore he's feeling great and he's happy so yeah, I, I, as I said when Jen when Jen emailed that to me um you know I got I got back to her later I just said gee that you know Jen we that's a great story and I'd like to hear you if you're willing to do that, to share that, people need to hear things like this. You know, it, it gives them hope in, in situations that can be desperate, that the, that the Jesus they hear about is the Jesus they actually see in action uh, in a situation like this. And praying, we prayed for Christopher, and we got to, you know, and so I really believe we have to press in. You know, you've heard me say many times that. Uh, and I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, maybe more so than I do, that uh, we're living in very, very desperate times. And uh, I keep on going back to what keeps on, you know, people were converted by what they heard Jesus say, but help us over what they do. And so this, this emphasis, and Charlie Bouger has been on my case, and I think he's right, you know, about praying more for healing. we got to keep on doing it, praying in the spirit. And I agree with that. 
I also think we have to pray so we call soaking prayer. You know, we don't stop at just one time with Kyle. We got to keep for some situations I've experienced as many times as a priest. Sometimes we have to go back and pray over the same pray people at the same time over and over and over again for continual in-depth healing. We call it soaking prayer. Uh, so that it doesn't just go one shot affair, but a continual kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, Jesus, sometimes the way Jesus healed, Jesus healed many, many ways. Uh, but, but besides that, so what really struck me in the light of that, you know, I've been praying a lot about this and also what's been going on in, uh, around the country, you know, with this, this, the, 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 uh, the, the burning and rioting and, uh, the, pros, the problems not only within the outside the church and society, but the world that we live in. Uh, even within the church, the scandals. I mean, it's, you know, it was scandals. You know, some, some legitimate, some not legitimate, but it's, it's there. So, and to, well, how do we, how do we get, if, if we see these things, then what do we do about it? You know, a lot of people say they're praying about it. Well, yeah, right, we got to pray about it. But what, like, what are we, what are we called to do? What are we called individually to do? And many of us will be called in different ways. You know, Jen is seven twenty-four with her son. Uh, we're all me as a priest. Uh, you as lay people or lay people. I know John gets to use the word lay. But that's the term the church uses. It comes from the word lay, of course, in Greek. You know, that's what the church scripture says it is. And so, what are we called? And I feel very strongly in this part of my life is working with laity to associate with them and assist them because you are called to the marketplace. You live out in the world in a way that I do to a extent, but not the way you do. And that's where the battle lines are being divided. That's where the battle lines are in, in, the, in the riots in the cities. That's where it is. And it, it's the, it's, and that's what's going on. So when I recognize this, I want to read something to you. And I know you've heard this before, but just bear with me, because this one thing, it's here, it's a little pamphlet, and I wanted to show it to you. It's only about 50 pages by Ralph Morton, and on the front page of the cover, it's called The Final Confrontation, and it's a picture of St. Michael the Archangel with a sword in his hair, made it a lot, the devil's head off, by Ralph Morton, and he's part of Renewal Ministries. It's an outstanding book, but anyway, he quotes, he quotes something that Cardinal Carol Latoya, who became Pope John Paul II, and this was in 1976, he made this statement coming to Philadelphia, speaking at a Congress, the, the, the National Eucharistic Conference in Philadelphia. He said, he said this. I'll, I'll quote the this is in the back of the back of the booklet. It says, many years ago, Pope John Paul II said, We are now standing in the face of the greatest historical confrontation that humanity has ever experienced. The final confrontation between the church, the anti-church, between the gospel, the anti-gospel, between the Christ and the antichrist, and these confrontations lie within the plans of divine providence. It is therefore as God's plan, and it must be a trial which the church must take up and face courageously. Now, what struck me was, it is a, it is therefore in God's plan. All that we see happening. The riots, all these kinds of things. It's all part of God's plan. Not that he's willing it, planning it, but he's letting it happen. It's called God's permissive will. He's permitting it. And it must be a trial which the church must take up and face courageously. So what do you mean by take up? Just sit there and look? Or do we, or do we start to tell you, what is God asking me to do or us to do as individuals and as a group to take up in this final confrontation where we see policemen being shot, people, stores being broken into. Well, you know, you probably are more in tune with some of this stuff than I am. And so how do we engage? We talk about healing. Yeah, that's part of it. But Jesus healed people, and yet he was still crucified. Peter and Paul healed people. But he had, one had his head chopped off, and he, he was crucified. One was crucified. All the apostles, save John, was, uh, who became an exile in Patmos, were, were boiled in oil and killed. They were all killed, and yet they did all the things that we're doing. Now, I'm not saying, what I'm saying is, what is God saying to us in the ring of fire? And when I, what I'm looking at is, is when it's developed, it was all Catholics, right? Not, not necessarily by choice. These are the people that I was mostly in contact with. But that's changed over the, over the months, and now it's embracing people from 
different theological perspectives, the Bennett's and John Gracie and other people. And I'm praise the Lord, and I'm looking at this, the ring of fire, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, when I look at it, there's many stars, there's different strokes, there's different parts of that ring, and we don't have to walk alike and talk alike and look alike, but we're all part of the body of Christ. And so I'm looking at this from an ecumenical perspective, in the sense that John 17, 20, 23 comes to me, the world's going to believe when they see us in unity. You know what I'm saying? To see us in unity, diversity, yes, but in unity. And to proclaim it and to proclaim the gospel. So I'm saying, you know, when I when I was thinking about Tuesday and about the healing of the nations and the healing of the world, you know, you probably got some of those right people with the rights that are probably baptized Catholics. Maybe some of them are baptized Pentecostals. Maybe some of their agnostics, agnostics, nurses. I don't know that. But 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 we, are we being called to something? And the sense I'm getting more and more and more is spiritual warfare, spiritual conflict. And, you know, like something as simple as this, like tonight, why is it that every Tuesday we have a problem? I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. I'm saying this or this or this. But even tonight, it like, it's like, like Nightmare Tuesday. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I don't handle it well. I admit that. And God bless Kent and God bless Jenny. You know, my first reaction is, I don't know. Well, they give me a hand grenade. I'm going to blow it up. But I know we're on to something, and I know the devil's after me. Right? And he's going to, he, he knows what ticks me off. And so so now I can't see you. I know you can see me, but my point is okay, where do we go from here? Where, you know, what's, what's God saying to us? And I think that the Holy Spirit, my prayer for you all last week was for you people. You, Kent, you, Jenny. All the team, I was praying for you that the spirit would start speaking to you, to you particularly, and that the Lord would give you wisdom so that when we would come together on a Tuesday, and I'm even thinking of getting a Zoom room where we can meet, have conferences and all kinds of stuff to start to prepare what the Lord is calling us to do. And so um, my, my point is, and I'll, I'll, I'll get off, I'll, I'll land the plane on this is to get you to a point where, where are you in this? You're not, feel free to say something or feel free to be quiet. I'm okay with that too. It's like, do you and do we want to follow him where he's going to lead us? That's my point. Wherever he leads us, where's he going to go? Are we ready? Are we ready? Uh, well, let me speak for myself. Am I ready? Am I ready to do what he's calling me to do? I want to be, I'm willing, I'm able. Now the question is, is I'm, am I ready? And I, my prayer is, Lord, show me the way and help me well. Show me the way and I'll do whatever I believe you're asking me to do in these, in these, in these critical times, in these critical times. So I say that, I say that as I'm saying it, I'm praying for each and every one of you. Right now, I'm just thinking of you, but as I'm saying this, it's saying, I'm saying it in a prayerful way. It is, are you ready and are you seeking and you're ready for the next step and, and asking the Lord, what should we do? And let me conclude as one sentence. In the Catholic Church, we have this term called, that is limited to, but it's, it's, it's a Latin term called census fidei. And basically what that is in Latin is the sense of the faithful. In other words, the church, the faithful cannot err when they're in agreement. That's what we call it. When they, when they think in unity and they all come up and they're saying something, they cannot err. Because wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am among them. Yeah. I am among them. So that's, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm done. I'm done with, you know, with this unless we're going to pray for healing and people call or contact us. But I want you to talk, talk, just share, and let me. What what is God saying to you? And let and the people who are watching this, I want them to hear what you're saying, or watch what you're saying. I wish I could watch you. <laughs> you know, Father, oh. I had a hard time getting on tonight too, and I thought, and I thought exactly like you thought, and I thought, no, I'm not going to let you stop me, and I kept on working on it, and I made it. But while you're talking, I'm thinking, and you've got these crowds of people out there right now um 
majority good, minority bad. Um, you know, you've got your looters and your Antifa, but then you have just these, you know, so many people that are out there that are just they they want to see they want to see a kind of a kinder America. Um, that, that, that would be the perfect time, not for me though, because I, I and I wouldn't know how to do it. But this would be the perfect time to get out there and just get in the crowd and evangelize. And if there, you know, I saw a guy playing a listen to a guy and saw a crowd playing a I, I think he was playing a sax. And people just stopped. They, were, they stared and they were listening to him. And we could just get a really powerful um, evangelist out there to just evangelize to the people to the point where they would just stop dead on their tracks and listen. And this sounds like a dream, and maybe it is. Or just get people to kind of walk with the protesters and and talk to them and feel them out. You know, I think, Gail, I think as much as anything along that same lines, that God wants us to look out and be aware, just have our antenna up, like, and be aware of people. Like, there's a lot of people that are fearful right now. that are fearful because you got COVID-19, you got all of a sudden these, these riotous protests, and there's a lot of fear out there, people who don't know God. I mean, you know, one of the conversations I had with one of my brothers years ago, I'm the oldest of nine. I had one of my conversations with my brothers years ago was because he's not gone back to church. The rest of us have. And he was like, I don't understand all these things that are happening. And it had to do with deaths in his life and, and, and deaths in my life. We were both talking about it. I said, you know what? I have the, the distinct pleasure of having God lift me up during this whole thing and you're on your own. There's lots of people out there who are right around us. You know, we don't need to worry about all these protesters and stuff, just people that are right around us that are filled with fear and anxiety because of COVID-19 and these protests, the whole combination of things just freaks them out. So we need to be the voice of hope that, you know, that there's hope, that God has a plan. And I believe, you know, for myself, I, I think the most important thing we can do is to pray against evil. Like, and I look at, you know, the whole thing with, I mean, I've seen little, just a little bit of this whole comeback with, with President Trump holding that Bible. And uh -huh. to me, him holding that Bible is saying, we're not going to give in. Jesus is yeah. in charge. He's in charge of the whole thing. Despite the fact that there's evil being thrust in us on our faces through the news media, God is still in charge. He's not, he's not been defeated. We are the victors. We are the victors. But we have to share that with people who are fearful because there's lots of people that are just completely fearful. So we have to have our antenna up to see who they are. Like as we come across them in daily life, hey, how are you doing about this whole coronavirus thing? How are you doing about this whole protest thing? And they go, oh, my gosh, I'm really having a hard time. Well, let me tell you something. There's hope in Jesus. Jesus has a plan. He didn't sit up in heaven and say, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize it was going to be protests. I didn't realize it was going to be coronavirus. I know that I'm in charge of the whole universe. I don't I didn't have to second think about whether or not whether I can have control in the coronavirus situation. I didn't have to second think about whether or not I'd be in control of you know the whole protests and all these ugly all this ugliness and stuff that's going on. I'm in charge. I'm still in charge. These guys think they got it together. I am the man. I'm in charge. Don't you fear don't you be fearful. And we need to share that with people that God still despite what it looks like, he still is going to maneuver this thing into the right position and, and, and give us the victory. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Agree. Amen. 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 And how about John Grayson? John, would you, uh, would you share a little bit about uh, what you see God doing in the spirit realm with this, uh, with Pentecost 
And also, John, uh, would you lead us into with the first prayer for healing for uh, however you want, for Kyle or for Christopher? Sure. I, I, I think, let me say, uh, Pentecost was a, was a great, a great uh, day, and Ascension was a great season for me. Uh, one of the things that uh, that I, I I heard one of the speakers saying, I don't know who it was. Um, uh, you you get you get the power of the kingdom of God by waiting. The disciples had to wait ten days. Yeah. Before they, before they could uh, do whatever Jesus said was going to happen, he said, "Go wait ten days." Power came to him after waiting, but the authority the authority came to came to them when they stepped out in that street and said, "This is what's just happened." <laughs> and so you get power, you get power, and you get authority. But in Matthew, Jesus called his disciples out, and he gave them. And he gave them in the King James it says authority, and another version it says power, and they're not the same word. They're used synonymously sometimes, but they but they have they have different meanings. And and I believe that we have probably as a church have sat back and waited long enough and it's time to st step out. Like, uh, 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 like Gav was just saying, we could get out there in the street and just be somebody's friend for a minute. Just encourage them. As Bob says, just have a word of encouragement. You know how to fix the problem, but you know, when you get out there and you ask the Lord God himself for a word to speak, <laughs> a word of knowledge to speak, a word of wisdom to speak, a word of prophecy to speak, a word of encouragement to speak, just ask the Lord God to do that and, sh and to show you which one you're going to speak to. He'll do it. He'll Amen. do it. Amen. He'll do it. And, and, and we, 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 have, we, have, we have all there is to offer. I mean, the church is, is it. Uh, not, in the, not in the shape we're in now. Please get a little bit, okay? Um, uh, but but, but we, have, we, have the word, we have the word of the Lord. And uh, uh, we can't fix anything, but... but Nothing will get fixed if we don't go. Because Jesus said, greater things will you do than I have done But when you wait and, and, and are empowered. Well, we've got the power. Now, Amen. now, now, let's, now let's take hold of that, not with any kind of uh, sassiness or any kind of audaciousness, but with a humble, humble, humble awareness that God is, has placed in the vessel such as you and me, the awesome power of heaven, to make a difference in somebody's life. And so uh, I believe that is what we're supposed to do. I believe that is our calling. And we don't have to go to special school for that. Just get on our face, trust the Lord, call out, call out to the to the powers of heaven to come and 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 move in us. Move in us and move in us. And that was that was what I was so uh, undaunted about last week. I say I hope I didn't offend anybody. I said, you know, I was in our hands. Oh. The power's in our hands to do some of these things, a lot of these things. And uh, we just, the devil's just tricked us into thinking we don't really have the power. Well, baloney, we do have the power. Right. That's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12. Yeah, yeah. And when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit 30, 37, oh, years, man, 37 years ago, nobody told me I was supposed to have all nine of those those gifts. I got to get the tongues. I thought that was far as I was. I, was a, I thought I was a one gift guy. No, God says you're all nine gift folks. Get out there and yeah. and and and, and, and call, call upon me to, to fill you to overflow it and then go out and do it. But don't sit back and wait for me to drag you out of the house. Get out there and do it because because uh, uh, activation, activation of the gifts comes when we get out and do it. When we get out and do it. That's when the authority comes to get out and do it. And by the way, that's, that's when the confidence comes to get out and do it too. Man, I'm shaking in my boots, thinking we're going to evangelize it. But, I, but that's what I want to do. And that's what God wants me to do. And so I'll pray. I'm, I'm happy to pray. Pray for, for, for Kyle and with Christopher. I'm praying for Kyle. And, and by the way, Jennifer, if Kyle needs a super duper wheelchair, Christopher has one. He loves it. Get one. Oh, Kyle. That's right. Okay. But, but uh, I, I th and I think, by the way, uh, Jennifer, thank you for that testimony. And I, and I believe that, that our place right now in all this, in, in the whole flow of what God's doing is to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And I know you do that, but I think we just need to give God praise. We need to give him thanks. Thanks for the glory that is already revealing to us, uh, you know, day after day, week after week. 
and yeah, all the stuff out, all the stuff outside, out, out, in, out in, in, in the streets and the stuff that looks bad is exactly what the devil wants us to keep our eyes on. So we won't do what God wants us to do is to get out and as, as, as uh, Gail says, go make a friend with somebody. Just go encourage somebody. Just go walk alongside somebody. You don't have to post, don't protest for them. Just walk alongside them. Break, go walk alongside them and pray. Pray for them. Get out there and pray. You, your prayer has more power, more power than you know, especially yeah. when, you, when, when you are trusted that God has sent you out there as an ambassador of grace in the midst of all this disgrace. <laughs> and, uh, and, and do it. Now, I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to pray. Charlie asked me if I pray. I will be <coughs> glad to pray. <laughs> Any, anybody else need prayer that we want to pray? Has anybody called in, Jennifer, that we want to pray for? Um, not yet. I've been checking carefully. Um, okay. Everybody's, there, plenty of people are watching and uh, they're happy to see us. Good, and, good. Well, we're, we're happy to pray. Uh, I have a praise report, too. From Moorhead City, uh, a dear friend of ours had a stroke back in September, and uh, wasn't sure she'd ever be able to get much use out of her body. Uh, but uh, she has she has uh, uh, persevered. We've persevered in in, in Betty, prayer. Betty, and Betty yeah, uh -huh. and uh, she is making enough headway that she uh, expects to come home as yes. soon as her husband can Thank get the, can get the uh, the doors wide for a, a chair and an extra extra uh, wide toilet and that sort of thing so she's coming home that's a praise report i'm going to continue yes. to pray for betty betty is her name and yes. uh we're so grateful for the opportunity that we have to see the power of god yes 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 Boom. yes Boom. so so yeah father we thank you for thank you for kyle lord i so we I, christopher and i are so blessed oh, so blessed this week to be uh to be praying for kyle and to be to be uh considering oh god um, um how we can serve Kyle and Jenny and, and uh, Jenny's husband, and uh, just to serve you, oh Lord God, Thank in you, prayer. Thank you, but that's what we can do. We, we, can't, we can't go so much, but we can sow. We can sow some prayers, and so we will, oh Lord. We're so grateful. We thank you. We speak, we speak healing and blessing and uh, encouragement and grace and, and everything that Kyle needs and everything that Christopher Amen. needs. Christopher was, Christopher was born blind, and he sees now, and and I, and and. and we just we come before you, oh God, as the one who is is in, in is the author of life. And Lord, thank you. You created these thank bodies you. out of your perfect being. Thank you, Lord. You Jesus created Christ. them out of your perfect being. We weren't created out of nothing, oh God. We were created out of your very faith. That's what the writer of Hebrews chapter eleven says. Faith, faith is what you created us out of. Well, Lord, if you create us out of your perfect faith, and something's not perfect about us right now, Lord, I pray, touch us again, oh gracious God, and restore that. Which you have created by the perfect blood of Jesus and get glory in us, oh God, wherever we are, at whatever stage of healing we are, oh Amen. God, we want to glorify you and bless thank you and give you praise and honor. We are pray for all those people who are thank wounded you, this you, night, who are wounded this night. Pray for George you, Floyd's family, for his for his brother and his family, and, and for all those folks who are just so thank confused Lord. they don't know what to do except Praise hell, yeah. pardon my friend. Amen. But that's it. Just to get the joy of the But oh God, there are those who, there are those who really don't want this country to you know, settle down and to, and to and to be from and to take But we do, and we know Jesus. you do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We bless you for our president and for all those who are in leadership or who are stepping out to do what they can do to make things better. And we ask you to bless them, Lord, and to raise up godly leaders and godly leadership. At every house, oh God, from the White House to my house, yes. and every house in between, that we may bring glory and honor to you, oh God, and blessing to your people in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Keep it up. Everybody keep talking. Good way. That was a great word, John. If I may, I had another, I'm sorry, I had another thought. <laughs> um, and, and this would go out to the audience. I mean, if they know anyone that's in protest and walk in the streets and if they know that the person's a Christian and that person can sing, then I would ask that that person sing while they're protesting, sing God's praise. Nice. You know who's really good at what you just did, you said, John, is uh, Charlie and Lydia Bouget. Charlie's, uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe because he's selling always selling real estate and do, doing to people and trying to sell people something that what you were just said about right right around where you live, right where you, that's where I think I see Charlie and Lydia shine out. I'm more of a hand throw. I have, I'm the man with the hand grenades and the flamethrowers. <laughs> But John, Charlie and Lydia have a great, a great ministry and had a great gift. That was a great I word, John. I really appreciate that. It was well said. Hey, I would like to, uh, Father Ray, would uh, like, I'd like to pray for them and also follow up with Yeah, 35%. And I would like to say that uh, Rick, I spoke with Rick, yeah. and Rick okay. said that uh, in the last five days. Yeah, it's somewhere with a bunch of stuff. Hold on. Right. Would please, would everyone, yeah. please mute if you're not speaking. Would you please no, back, mute? Oh, it's not in the backpack because I had it. See ya. I had it in here, but I took it out with a bunch of stuff. Would everyone please mute? All right. All right. Otherwise, we can't speak. So, uh, Sam, start all over again. It was too, Charlie, start all over and saying there was too many voices there. Somebody was and talking then, in the okay, background. So we, it's good if we all mute. That would be great. This way we don't have to worry when someone's speaking. We'll just try to mute. Um, I had a good talk with uh, Rick. Rick, we started to pray with him. He's the fellow next door that was covered with uh, Agent Orange. And he sort of left it. You know, he doesn't want to do this. He's not. You know, he felt it was too Catholic. And he also felt that... Uh, you know, he felt that uh, praying in tongues was something he just, you know, wasn't for him. But he's a good man. And we prayed a lot for him. And I just, about two hours ago, I sat down with him. And he said to me, you know, I want you to know it's a very big thing. In the last five days, not last night, but the four nights prior to that, I had no pain at night. And he said, I haven't had anything like that. I can't remember. Because at night, he has severe pain. And he, and he takes really heavy meds, you know, so he is, he is, uh, you know, he's acknowledging it, and so I said, well, look, we're going to continue to pray with you, so uh, let's do it, and let's just pray, Father God, uh, here we are, and your son Jesus said, we're two or more gathered in his name, that he is present, so Lord, Amen. we truly believe that you are present right now, Lord, we're here for a purpose, and the purpose is to bring you, Jesus, to the forefront by healing people, by deliverance ministries, by any way that you think, Lord Jesus, that your precious Holy Spirit will guide us and move in us. Holy Spirit, we recently celebrated here the wonderful day of Pentecost, where you came upon us at the request of God the Father. Jesus said it was a gift. It was a gift that... The Father gave us. So we accept that gift. We love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we need to see these signs and wonders, Holy Spirit. We're trying our very best to do what Jesus asked us to do when he said the things he did, we were doing even better. So, Holy Spirit, we ask you to back us up. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to send your fire on Christopher Grayson. We ask you to send your fire on Kyle. We ask you to send your fire right now, Holy Spirit, on, on Rick that there would be healings yes, that, yes and, and does anybody else go ahead and shout their name out right now yeah i want to pray pray a healing that exists between christian okay. and nation. holy spirit we just ask that through the power your power holy spirit that the blood of the lamb of god would cover those three people and that we would see miraculous healings and that the healings would bring people to come to know and love jesus and, and for the whole world to know that Jesus is not only words, but Jesus' words have power. And that there is no other God like Jesus. He's the king, and he's the only king. It's King Jesus. And Lord, Lord Jesus, we need to see this, Lord. And we're here depending on you, Jesus, to back us up. We're here doing this because we want to see people come to repent and come to know you and love you. We want to see all people of all colors, creeds, and races to come to be brothers and sisters in the Lord. We want that blessing because we know in the Gospel of John, you said, Father, you and me, I and them, so that we may be one, so that the world will know that you sent me. Jesus, we, in your name, we pray blessings and total healing on Christopher Grayson, on Kyle, and on Rick, uh, fire tag next door. Lord, we just pray this and we ask for the fire to enter into him. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, we stand and we thank, thank God for you, Jesus. And we pray with thanksgiving and expectation, Lord, and, and great faith. Help our faith. Give us more faith. We pray that. We pray for our country. We pray for this, for, for the folks, uh, for, for peace between all races and all religions. And we pray, Lord, that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. And uh, we pray these things, Lord Jesus, in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Hey, Charlie. Charlie. I had a holy hunch. Butler and Ann, no. Butler, we, were, we would like to hear your thoughts. You started sharing a little bit earlier about our country and what's yeah. going on in our country, if you'd like to share. I'm to. Who are you talking you. to? Who? Me? Me? Lydia just said something, but I don't know which who she's talking to. I wasn't either. <laughs> are you talking about are you talking to Father Ann or John or, or Gail? Who are you talking to? Gail. Uh, Ann, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? You're on mute. You're on mute, dear. You want me to say something? I think she was were you talking to the Bennetts? Talking to you. Okay. There you go. And Lydia was sharing if Butler would like to finish sharing. Oh, or oh yeah, yeah, all right, all right, good, good. Yeah. Go ahead, Butler. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. Well, you know, we've all been very concerned about what's happening across this country, not only with the virus, but also with these riots. And I think that is John was talking about is that we really have an incredible opportunity to go out and meet with these people that are struggling because they're looking for answers and they're looking for friends and they're looking for spiritual leadership and they're very, very open. And okay, I, I guess think Butler's that, not going to come, right, Ann? No, he's talking. He's talking. We can't hear you. Not hear him? We can't hear you. I can hear you. You got to get closer up, Butler. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Can you hear him now? You're muted. Oh, no, he's not muted anymore. Yes. yes can. Can, you, can you hear me? Can you hear him? Can you hear me? Wait, uh, yes. Person. We can hear you. Uh, um, okay. I don't even know where I was. <laughs> I just feel like that. I'm just concerned. And the thing that worries me is, is that what's been happening in this country in my lifetime is that we've had these problems about every two or three or five or 10 years where something really bad happens and it brings the American people's attention to the challenge that we have. And we all rally and we may even hey, go uh, overboard. Can you hear us okay? Yes. Okay. Yep. Well, for some reason, Ann and Butler, we still cannot hear you at all. Well, it sounds like, Charlie, that everybody can hear you, me, but you. I can hear him. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I can hear you, Bennett. Well, so, but what I was saying is, is that okay. uh, what we've got to, we've just got to get, the Lord wants us to be able to, a lot of these brothers and sisters that are challenged with this challenge that we have now, this racial issue, are people that are also believers. But we're having a very difficult time really helping them understand that we really care. I think it was Gail that was talking about earlier that really kind of got me thinking, was that we've talked about this problem for over a week now, and we know the problem, and we all are just totally heartbroken about what happened. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that that we need to do is to move on from the, the thing that happened and move on towards a solution. Mm-hmm. And I think that the only solution is really what John and, and Ed and we're all talking about is God has given us power 
the way God changes the world, it looks to me like, is he changes it one person at a time. Only he can change hearts. But he empowers us to be able to change the hearts of people that we come in contact with. And so I have all these ideas that go through my mind all the time about how we humans are going to solve a problem, but we can't solve it. Only Jesus can solve it and the Holy Spirit and the Lord. And he uses us to do that. And I agree with what Ed said is that we all want to do what God wants us to do, but the time has come for action. And I think Charlie and I talk a lot about the evil that's in the world. We keep letting evil just kind of float by and we really don't call it what it is. I know as a businessman that one of the things that you have to do to solve a problem, you got to clearly define what the problem is. And then you got to apply certain criteria to solve it. And it's, it would seem to me like that's what God has taught us how to do. So I, I had this idea when I was talking a little earlier about, I was, going to tell you all about this meeting that I was in with these men that were really amazing people like this group here, no different than us, but they, you know, just from different parts of the country. So some of the people that are on this call this morning were in Germany. Some of them were from Africa. Uh, they were scattered all across the country, just like this call is. And they were all know that the answer is Jesus. And we know in Second Chronicles that Jesus told us that if we would repent and change from our evil ways, he wasn't talking about the guys that are burning down the buildings. He was talking about us. And so I just think about these things a lot. And I'm, I, I appreciate what, what we're trying to do here. And uh, I, I'm open and I'm with you. And you got anything you want to add? Well, I think we talking about two different things here with the with what's going on uh in our country i think we're talking about uh the people who wanted to were concerned about what happened to george floyd and so that as butler said has been recognized it was we've heard several people say this was an opportunity for us to come together in unity because no one believed there was any controversy over what happened to george floyd we were all in agreement with that and um, so that so we have agreement. So why are we having all this protest? So and I think that we were talking to John Grayson before we everyone got together, and uh, we were in agreement with him that there is an element of our society that wants to do harm to our country, and they want and they want and and so you've got that element out there who are root, uh, looting our country burning it down, destroying the livelihoods of small businesses and big businesses and, and, and killing people. And I mean, this last night I saw on the TV where they were pulling people who owned businesses who were trying to defend their businesses. They were beating them to a pulp with bats and iron and metal and throwing things through their windows. And, you know, that is not, um, you know, and that's what we've got. I think our president is trying to stop that element of it. But we've got to be able to get a grip on these, you know, something has got to be done so that the African-American feels safe and so that the police are respected. And uh, I think that a lot has been, uh, progress has been made since the last time this happened. And the police are really trying in many areas, not in all, I'm sure, because of, of what happened to George Floyd. but. The police are trying. Uh, we've met with groups of police officers who really care and who are, who are really concerned about the spiritual life of the police officers. There's not a very high, we think, I, I, I used to think there was a very high percentage of the police who were believers. But it seems that they tell us that, that's very, that that is not true. There's only a small percentage of the police who really know Jesus and really are trying to follow him. So, you know, that's one thing that we could really pray for. But I really feel like that this idea of this racism, this, uh, uh, that's so much a part of our culture 
how do you deal with that? It's a very difficult problem. And Butler and I have discussed it a lot. And I don't know that we have, we don't have the answers. Only God has the answers. And I know, you know, Butler and I believe we came to learn that uh, our purpose in life is to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbors ourselves. And then many times we don't do a good job of that. But that is what our purpose in life is. And so if we all had that as our purpose in life, the great commandment, I think that we would be able to see things differently. And we would, you know, to try to begin to love people that are not like us. And I know, I mean, John Grayson as a pastor, as a priest would have, and, and Father Ed, y'all have, you know, have a congregation, have people that you accept and love in your congregations, regardless, unconditional love sacrificial love the way jesus loved us sacrificially i understand that the first time agape the word agape appeared in the scriptures was in john 3 16 that god so agape the world that he sacrificed his son and we've got to be willing to sacrifice to get out there in the midst of these crowds and i was just thinking then i think it was john who was talking that i was thinking about the israelites it was time for the Israelites to move on and move into the promised land. But they had a big obstacle. It was called the Jordan River, that they had to cross over it. And so God said, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow you will see great things. But first of all, they had to put their feet in the water. And when they put their feet in the water, the waters backed up, and they walked across on dry land. Again, just like the Red Sea. And so I think that we've all got to put our feet in the water and we've got to get out there and we've got to ask God to show us, give us divine appointments, be able to talk to the people, uh, share. You know, Butler and I often say, if people only knew what we knew about God, they would all want in. They would all want to be a part of it. They would all want to know it. So how do we share what's in our hearts and the experience that we have with God with those protesters out there. And so it's, you know, or, or to the businessman who's lost his livelihood, his, all of his life savings have been gone up with these looters who are just running free. Yeah. No, and I don't know of, the answer, but God does. One of, one of the things that touched me so deeply was uh, after so much destruction in different cities, then you would see someone come with a broom mm -hmm. and with gloves Clean on, up. and they would and they would start cleaning up, and that that is. And then another thing is, you would see, you know, all the violence, all the bloody violence and the ugliness of it. And then you would see two people, very different, to hug each other or to acknowledge one another or just to to, to listen to one another. So. It's, it's, it's simple. I don't mean to oversimplify it, but sometimes, like you said, if we're out in the middle of a crowd and all we have to do is just to um, say a good word to somebody and give them a hope, give them a hope. Yes. So, um, and, and it just cha it changes because that's love, that's love in action. Um, well, and I've, and someone has told me that if you will say to someone, may I pray for you? You know, if you're talking to them and they're distressed and you say, may I pray for you? It's rare that you would be turned down. But if you try to tell them about sometimes about something, they may not want to hear it. But yeah. if you ask, you can pray for someone. Yes. That's a different, a whole different level of, of intimacy with them, of lifting up their problems and seeing things from their point of view. And by the way, Ed, let me, hey. show you, let me show you a story about what you just said, Ed. Can you hear me? Yes. When I was at the University of Steubenville, a kid, some of the students came up to me and they wanted me to go down to Pittsburgh with them to this abortion clinic. And he said, Father, man, we want you to come. We want you to wear your car, bring your Bible, we want you to preach. And I looked at him. I couldn't say none of these kids, right? So I, I kind of went down. And we were we were on the streets, and they went to call it the, the bubble zone. And on all the kids at the university wore these T-shirts. I can't remember what color it was. A pro-life. And across the street was the um, pro-choice. 
and they had t-shirts on too, and I can't remember what was on their t-shirts. And so the leader, I can't remember her name for us. Uh, she was a, she was a pro-life major. She was a, well, I can't remember what her major was, but she was one. She was the one that conned me into going with them. So anyway, she, she went out there and she went in the middle of the street and she met with this guy. It really fits in what you just said, Ian. And and he he picked him up and they're talking to one another. And I had no idea what they were talking about, but afterwards. She winds up putting her hands on her head and start praying for him. And she, I came back and I said, I, I'll call her Susie, but I mean, I can't remember what her name was, but I guess to see what happened. And she said, well, we were there and he's very pro-choice and I'm very pro-life. And we just started to talk and I asked him how he was doing. He said, oh, I'm praying for my mother. Her evidently it's praying for his mother and mother and mother, something like that was sick or maybe it was his dad. I can't recall. But all she did was, she said, well, can we pray? Can, would you like me to pray for him? And here's a guy that's pro-choice, one's pro-life, and that, that, that pro-life, pro-choice wasn't the issue. The common denominator in that situation was that, <clears throat> that his mother was sick, and here was somebody offering to pray for his mother. If it was his mother, then it could be his father. But anyway, <clears throat> somebody took a picture of this. I'll never forget this. Of these two in the middle of the street, in front of an abortion mill, Planned Parenthood abortion mill. And these two, young, these two young people representing different positions and one praying for the other. When she came back and she told me, oh, like this, as you were telling the story, and that's exactly, I remember that. Uh, you know, the, the idea that here's conflict. I mean, it was potentially dangerous. People would be going by, driving by their car, looking at me and giving me the finger, right? Because I, I was in there with the Bible and I was dressed as a priest. And stuff like that. But my point being that there's something to be said about it and is listening to you all talk, we all can't be down at the, um, we all can't be down at the, uh, where, the where, where the riots are taking place. But I know Charlie's talking to somebody next door, not Rick, but somebody else, a guy that, you know, like one-on-one -on -one evangelization, me living with my guys in my house. How am I able to put it into practice what you said, Ian? And, and also, you know, what we're all saying, he's given us a platform on Ring of Fire to talk about it and to do it, but we got to do it to the closest, sometimes the closest people we live. If we have the opportunity to get out in the streets, the other word, fine, that's fine. But that may not be possible at all. To my point being that I think there's something, maybe the Lord's trying to tell us something. And I think Mother Teresa of Calcutta said the same thing. Not everybody can come to, she said, not everybody, you know how she said, it. not everybody could come to Calcutta, but you can begin with your own home and your own family by loving one another, something like that. So I think there's something to be said about what's being said. I'm just trying to listen. And what is the Holy Spirit saying to us? Yeah, we continue to pray for healing. Huh? Yeah. But the healing. I know one of Mother Teresa's big things was to say, it doesn't matter what you do, it only matters how much love you do it with. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And as it begins, like even at the dinner table tonight, we're sitting at the table. I won't mention names, but one of the priests, a good man, he's a good friend, and I, I love him. We started to talk, and the other day I <laughs> I eat six eggs a week, and I had three eggs and two sausages, and he brought it up. And I, I hope that. So what are you worried about how many calories I eat? What are you eating? So, it really wasn't a good response. I said, oh, there I go again. But it wasn't a loving thing. Now what I got to do is go back and say, now here's a guy I live with. He's a member of my community. And I gave him a smart answer. It wasn't a loving kind of a thing. And I wasn't loving him when I said it. I became very tense. tense, tense about but my, I guess I'm just, I'm trying to, Put flesh in what you said and, and how we can actually start to put into practice exactly what you're saying right um, even among us yeah you know, among among this group you know how do we bring a guy like rick you know in who's who's heavily you know if you know anything about a lot about the baptist the baptist traditions they're anti-charismatic so i can see where rick would struggle with some of this stuff because that's not part of their agenda you know, a, a lot of some of the background and religious background he has. And so he would, I can understand how he would struggle because that isn't part of his tradition in, in some ways. 
but yet he can't deny that for four or five days he was feeling better. So how do we love Rick? How do we let Rick look? look, Rick, we love you. So we're Catholic, but you're Baptist or you're Methodist, wherever you go, we love you. And we're in this together. And uh, so maybe that's what the Lord's saying to us. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just, I know what's really saying to me. You know, what can I do listening to what's being said and the healing process that needs to have to take place within us? You know, so that uh, we're doing well, it. Well, I think also we can ask God to give us somebody who is of different persuasion than we are to pray with. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's the beginning. I know I was asked last uh, fall uh, for an event that I was going to go to to uh, participate in that I was asked to find somebody of the totally opposite political persuasion than I was. And to seek them out and then to pray every day with them. And uh, which was about four months. And so mm -hmm. I, I called somebody and asked them to help me find somebody. And they actually said, I know a young person, a young man that I'm going to get that, that I would like to get. And he called him and said, yes, and he'd like to do that. So this young man who was uh, in his early thirties and I, we didn't get together every day because he was, you know, four hours away from me. But we each prayed for, the, for each other and prayed for uh, that God's name would be lifted up in what we were doing and that we would learn how to love one another and that, uh, you know, that several items that we were, uh, it, for the, what we were getting ready to do. And, uh, so he, and then we would talk on the telephone period, every two or three weeks, two weeks. And we, we just had the best time together. We got to know each other really, really well. But now we've sort of, uh, because that the event is over, we've only got together one time. And I've been thinking today that I need to call him through this. Mm -hmm. And uh, he really works. Uh, uh, he, he works in the political circles. And uh, we were, we never talked about politics. We only talked about the Lord. And we only talked about, and we prayed together and we got to be great friends. That's great. Isn't it? So it's, I think that's what we need to do about with others and, begin to share our hearts together and, and y'all know how to do this y'all are much better than we are at this i mean you do it every sunday and so y'all are the ones to tell us how to do this you know so many times we, we go to church on sunday and some of us go maybe more than once a week and then we leave and we may give pray for people that we know maybe in the workplace or a friend or a family member but we never walk down the street or in the store and 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 pray for someone and i'm just you know and i'm just shooting from the hip here i'm just the, the, you know the wheels are spinning and the uh father ed you know priests the evangelists the pastors they have a big audience. They have a large audience, and they can talk to the to the masses. And it's it it shouldn't. I mean, it, it shouldn't be about just praying for friends or family members or waiting for someone to ask if they want, you know, if they need prayer to to ask you for it. I mean, if there's, I just I can't really grasp it right now but i mean just walking down the street being in a store or walking down the street and seeing someone that where your heart just kind of sinks when you look at that person and think oh geez that person really looks sad you know maybe i can offer even though it's a stranger maybe i can ask them how they're doing and offer prayer uh to them and but I think this is something, this is the word we've got to get out in the churches as well, because when we go to church, we know that we're supposed to pray for people, but we don't actually go out and actively do it. Hey, uh, I just did. How do we do? Sum it up. How do we do it among ourselves more so? You know, like. Hey, uh, as Gail, we, I think you're, you're absolutely right. I'd just like to say one thing here um praying for people i think if we pray on our own and we have intentions for certain people let's say like on our prayer list 
maybe we know that they are involved with some issues, problems, and so forth, and just throw it out there to the Blessed Virgin Mary, eventually some of these people will be attracted to you and will come to you uh, in some way. Yeah. And that's where you can reach out a little bit of charity, even if it's just listening to them, maybe having a cup of coffee with them, or actually trying to help evangelize them. All right. Contemplative prayer. Um, yeah, I've, I've had a few people just contact me out of the blue that I haven't talked to in years, but they were on my prayer list. That's powerful, and see if, and, and this is what I'm saying. When we go to church, we don't we don't hear, we don't hear um, homilies or sermons like that. I mean, we may hear it at at the charismatic center, um, but we don't hear it at the the parish, or maybe even at Joel Osteen's church. So, but what you're saying is correct. And I think, I think that the church needs to preach that more for, for their congregation to go out. And if you see someone pray quietly for them, pray for people that you don't, that, that don't know that you're praying for them. And maybe that will draw people to you. Pray for the person in the street. They don't have to know that you're praying for them. And witness it. If there's a door open, walk in and start witnessing. Well, you know, Butler and I, in 2012, 11, 12, got the idea <laughs> that we wanted to go to every county in North Carolina, 100 counties, and we wanted to find a find somebody to pray for the leadership of their county, state, and the national level, and pray for the biggest problem their community had. And so we didn't really know how to do that, uh, but we just started. And, you know, our heart was open to go and meet people. We, we didn't know people. We knew, knew a few people to start with. But then we just started. We'd pack the car for a week, and we'd start out. And we'd say, Lord, take us where you want us to go. And we would drive to wherever we felt like he was sending us to go. And then we'd go. So most of the time, we'd go to the courthouse and sit on the steps at the courthouse and say, okay, Lord, who do you want us to meet now? Where do you want us to go? And we invariably would end up in the, by, by God's divine province, we would end up in the office of the chairman of the county commissioners. And we would pray with them and ask them to start meeting together as a group to pray for the leadership of their county. Uh -huh. And we only got to 67 counties. We didn't get to all 100. <laughs> but it was the most amazing year that we have ever had. And we had so much fun doing it. I mean, it was like every time we went out, we'd had a miracle. And the, the right before we went out, I was in a Bible study and we were doing Gideon. And I was sitting in the lady's house and we were studying Judges. And we came to Judges 6, verse 14. And it said, and my translation said, hey, almighty warrior, you sitting in your house in North Carolina by the sea, go out in the strength you have and save your nation. Am I not sending you? And I said, it jumped off the page to me because we had just decided we were going to do this. Wow. And I said, this is for us. God says, if we will go, he will be with us. And he was every step of the way, guiding us and directing us. And we really had a miraculous year. It was just amazing. But so we can all do that. That's where God wants us to do. That's like Jesus that we based it on Luke 10. We then the next year did something about the whole state and based it on Luke 10. Jesus sent the 72 out. They were not trained. And I thought, I, mean, I got the idea from that, that Jesus, the church thinks we have to train people to send them out. Jesus sent them out and let that train them. So mm -hmm. as we go out and meet with people and pray with people, and share Jesus with them, that trains us. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us and directs us and shows us, you know, divine appointments. I mean, they were just we just had so many divine appointments, it was unbelievable. See, and that's it in a nutshell. And if the church can get this across to their to their congregation, 
how powerful would that be? So many of us, we love the Lord, but so many people are scared to talk, mention that, that, that you're a Christian because you don't know if you're being frowned on, but a lot of times you're not being frowned on. A lot of times the person you're talking to is, is scared to open up in the workplace or you know whatever the case may be. But you can't, you've got to, you can't, well, you can, you can do anything you want to do, but we need to just go out there and, and, you know, praise the Lord. And if someone gives you a scowl, praise them even more. You That's know? right. Well, like, this is what would happen to us. One of the first times we were out, we were up in a county that was up on the border of Virginia, and it was a very rural county. We drove around the county. We couldn't find anybody. There were no, you know, during the week, there were no cars in church parking lots. So we were riding by a store that sold farm equipment. And Butler said, we're supposed to stop and go in here. I said, great. So we went in the parking lot and we parked. And he said, I'm going in. And I said, good, I'll sit in the car. <laughs> so he went in and the lady came up to him and said, can I help you? And he said, well, is the owner in? And she said, no, he's not. He's out calling on customers. And Butler said, so Butler sort of, um, we did a lot of hemming and hawing around. I can tell you that in every place we went. Uh -huh. So the lady said, well, what can I, what are you here? What are you looking for? And Butler said, well, you may think I'm crazy, <laughs> but he said, I'm looking for somebody in this county who will pray and pray for the county, for the state and federal and, you know, state and local people. She said, my boss would love that. Let me give you his telephone number. Oh my goodness, praise God. And so Butler called him and he said, please be in my office back in the morning at eight o'clock. And so we went back to his office and he was thrilled that we were there. And, you know, it turns out that his best friend was, what was it? One of them was chairman, the guy we were talking to was chairman of the board of education and his best friend was the chairman of the commissioners. And so that was just riding down the road and God saying, stop here. And so we did that a lot. That's powerful. And it was, it was powerful. It was powerful to us. I mean, that really showed us what God wants us to do. Right. And it's just a wonderful feeling knowing that he's using you as an instrument of his love like that. It's just. Well, he, he really use, uses us, all of us, and yeah. would like to do that. It's a follow up on that was a year or two after that, we invited about 200 people from around the nation and divided them up into teams. And then we, uh, they came to North Carolina and we sent them out with a North Carolinian as a driver and mostly two or three people from out of state. And we sent them to these different counties and we tried to go to all the counties, but we didn't have anybody for them to go see. We sent them out and asked them to pray, go to the county and pray and ask the Lord who he wanted them to see. And they would do it. We did this for, from Tuesday through Friday. We came back over the weekend and everybody reported in. And they all had experiences just like we did. So we know that God uh, will lead us to the people that he wants us to lead us to. And in the people that had helped the most in that were the people that actually went out and did it. But we do hear stories around the state of different people that were impacted and still are by that. For example, one group went to Bojangles and they went into the restaurant and, uh, they didn't know anybody and they just started talking with somebody and pretty soon uh, they ended up in the middle of the restaurant with everybody in the restaurant holding hands praying. Wow. And there, was, there was a guy in there named Dave who had cancer and he asked for prayer. And this, all this took place in like September or something. October. October. Well, Thanksgiving, I was talking with one of the guys that was in the Bojangles was one of the guys that was doing this, you know, this thing that we were all doing. He said, you won't believe what happened. I said, what happened? He said, I got a phone call from this guy. And his, you know, I told you all his name was Dave and he calls him Bojangles Dave. <laughs> and he said, he called me and told me that he's cancer free. Oh, praise God. And so it's just when we turn to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit what he wants us to do, it really works, but when we do what I have a tendency to do sometimes is make us plan, like we're going to do this and do that and all that, it doesn't work very well. 
And so what we're really all trying to do, and I know that's what we're trying to do on this call, is we're trying to not start a new work. We're trying to join in with what God's already doing. I like that. I like what you just said there. Yeah. What's he doing? Yeah, that's right on the money. That's right on the money. Well, you know, everybody today is a little fearful and has lost a lot of hope. And it's a wonderful time to go out and encounter people. Evangelize. You know, yesterday, yesterday I had, I went out with some friends of mine. And this guy tells me, his, uh, he says his sister, he's going out to see his sister next week. And she's been diagnosed with cancer and she's chemotherapy. And I said, what's her name? He says, come just to continue this conversation. And I said, uh, he said, well, I, I think it's cool, Susie, I can't remember. And I said, where is she? She's in Ohio. I said, let's call her. So she had, we call her. And I'm looking at her and she's lost all her hair. And she's trying to be upbeat and we're talking. And I said, I'm Father Ed Wade. I know your brother real well. And he told me about you. What? We started to share. And I said, do you mind if we pray over you? And I said, now look, what we're going to do is, this is just a, what you're saying. Is that she had her cell phone. She was on, uh, she was on her uh, FaceTime and I had FaceTime. She was in Idaho and I was, we were in Texas. And I said, we're just going to pray for you now. We're going to pray in English and pray for healing. And those, oh, yeah, would well, you want that? She said, yeah. It's like, I'm going to pray in tip the tongues. I explained it to her a little bit. Anyway, make a long story short. We prayed over her. And I said before, she looked, she was completely bald. And she just put her head down. And I put, we said, and so I looked at her brother and his, my, her brother and, her, and his wife. And I said, let's all pray for her. So I put my finger on the, her head on my phone. And just prayed over her, you know. Obviously, pray for healing and, and healing of the cancer and what have you. And anyway, and that only took a couple of minutes. And then she said, after it was over, uh, she just looked and she was so grateful and thankful. She's by herself, and it's just like what you said. And you know, she's with what's going on, fear, fear of the unknown, and stuff like that. That somebody really cares. So that's what I'm hearing, you know, like this, based on what I saw yesterday. And how well, how can we, what's the best way to use this? This is what I want you to think of. What's the best way to use this platform that we have right now to do this, you know, to to reach out? You know, I, I'll get a lot of emails. Will you pray for this? Will you pray for that? How do we do it? And you're like, we well, had one oh. thing that happened out of that North Carolina adventure that came to mind is that, yeah. One of the groups that went out, you know, we told you we sent them out in little groups of three to four, uh -huh. is they had such a good time, they got back to the D.C. area, and they decided that one group decided that they weren't, it wasn't all the group, but this guy got his small group, and they went out and tried it. And they just went out and, and sat on a bench and prayed and asked the Holy Spirit, God, what do you want us to do? Who do you want us to meet? What kind of divine appointments do you want us to have? And they spent a half a day meeting people. And they were really blown away about what happened. And I can't tell you one single story about what actually happened, but that's what they did. And they came back excited about it. So that's something we can all do. We can do that tomorrow. We can, if we, when we go to work, we can say, Lord, I'm going out as your, as your ambassador. That's what we are. I'm going out as your ambassador. Who do you want me to talk to tomorrow? Set it up for me. Lead me to where you want me to be. Yeah. And I guarantee you, if we do that, almost every one of us is going to meet somebody. Why don't, we, why don't we commit ourselves to do that this week? I mean, obviously, I can do it here. We can meet people because I get emails all the time asking for things and stuff like that. So I can call these people. You know, there's a different way. Why don't we do that? It's just based on that's what I'm hearing. That's the, been the total of our compromise is to pray for that. Charlie has another guy he's meeting with it next door, not not Rick, but somebody else. Uh, why don't we Why don't we make a decision to do what you just said, uh, Bennett? You know, like uh, Lord, who do you want me? Who you know? Five days, my five. Lord Jesus, what, what do you want me to do? Here I am in Houston. Who do you want me to talk to today? Give me a divine appointment, even if it's on the internet. Give me a divine appointment. Here I am. I'm, a re I'm ready. Whatever it is, could be somebody in my house. Could be one of the guys I live with. Who knows? 
but to do it. Let's put that into practice. What do you think? Yeah. Get a sh- yeah. Get a shot. Let's do it. And uh, uh, Gail, you know, uh, you started this, which was really great, Gail. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I agree with you 100% because we're not getting it from the vast majority of churches are not uh, are not moving it with us. So, uh, you know, my, my sense of what I did, you know, everyone has to make their own decisions is uh, I go where I see it. Um, I'll go where I sense that God is moving us. I'm not saying you should leave the church. I happen to went to two churches. We went to mass because we believe uh, in the sacraments, but we're not getting it from. We're not getting a movement was uh, in the uh, in the Holy Spirit with people. We're not ex- we're not moving in the gifts that God is giving us and so forth. And we need it, and especially the young people. So search around. Ask God to show you. Um, you know where you can where you can be with people who will back you up, and they'll uh, you know they'll be with you. They're like-minded people. You know, I'm not saying you should change your denomination or church or leave the church, but what I'm saying, if you go out, you'll be with other people. Search around for you. You may be better. You look for a charismatic prayer group or something, uh, or just folks you know um, who you may meet uh, normally uh, who uh, have a like-minded that you can pray together and start going out. Because to me, it's, it's a lot better when you're with a group of people who are like-minded. Um, and and once, once the young people see that, what we've experienced, once the young people see the power of God moving, you know, they get excited. And they're getting excited about their faith because they can then start to ask questions and move in it. So I would say, you know, search for something uh, in addition to what you have now. Yeah. And I'll pray to you. Yeah. And we can just ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. You know, we pray, we pray, Holy Spirit, show us where you want us to go. Who Let's do it this way. Yes. yes. Why, don't we, why don't we plan to do each one of us in some little way do that this week? You know, um, Make it, and when we meet me next Tuesday, we'll come up and say, okay, what happened? <laughs> I'm all for it. I love this. I, I, I'm excited about it. I, you you want to give it a shot? That's our game plan for the week? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Hey, let's, let's pray in the spirit as we go out because we're going we're gonna to check out. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot past. It's almost 1030. Yeah. Our time over here. Uh, Lydia so turns into a pumpkin. Shande Baruch Adonor Kadesh Adem Are Are Baruch Ahora Ale Hey Are Baruch Baruch Shalei Amah Baruch 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 Ayamdu Belikei Are Baruch Amah Baruch Shande Baruch Amah Baruch Imarak Shichet Atahiket Atlusuto Imarak Shichet Lord, just guide us as we go through this journey of this coming week. Amen. Lead us to the places that you would have us to go. Put us into the lives of the Lord Jesus. You want us. Lord, I don't really know how many people are on this call and listen to this, but encourage us all to go out because if we each did one, it would make a big impact on a lot of people. And if they did one, wow, it would be amazing what would happen. So thank you, Lord. Lord, let the fire fall. Amen. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I ask your blessings. Open your heart and let the fire fall, Charlie. I, yeah, I ask your blessings upon this group of people. Lord, I, first of all, I just thank you for bringing them into my life as a priest. And, uh, I'm humbled by it. And I thank you for that. Just make us one. Yes. Make us one. Amen. Amen. We love you guys and everybody's really tight. Right. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good